some fun okay so, <laughs> that's why I'd be a little hostile I think I was, was, was uh... okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off asking just discuss in a summary uh, your journey coming to Dallas in 1976 followed by your yep. chronicle of um, uh, I guess experiences and journeys, everything from graduating from Boston College. L little sh a life. Uh, a little, a little bit, life. just to give them a little yeah. background on you. Yeah, uh, I was, uh, went to high school. Uh, I was actually born in Texas, I was in, in uh, the Panhandle. My dad was in education and uh, went to Syracuse University to get his PhD uh, in, uh, when I was in high school. And so that's where I went to high school. Um, I played football and uh, went to Boston College on a scholarship. I couldn't, we couldn't afford, we, my parents were school teachers and couldn't afford a big school back east. But fortunately, I, I was good enough to play ball, uh, football, so I got a scholarship there. I was, uh, I played left out uh, most of the time at, uh, in, at football. I wasn't that good, but I got a scholarship. Um, I love the New England. I don't know, if, if you ever have a chance to visit New England, it's beautiful, it's great. But it was in the middle 70s, and if you know a little bit about history, uh, we, if we talk about tough times, that was one of the really tough recession periods of, of, uh, in the United States, and I couldn't get a job back east. Um, and uh, I had a reason to come back here uh, in Dallas, and back in Dallas at that time, if you could... Uh, if you could fog up a mirror with your breath, you know, they'd hire you. And so I, uh, I got a job, and so I came back. Um, and what basically happened was Dallas was a place, it didn't matter about who you knew, it was about what you could do. And I've always felt that about the city. It's, it's not about, a lot of cities are about connections. He knows this person or she knows this person. And this is about making it happen. So uh, I was in the radio business, I was a reporter. And uh, then I got fired. Uh, I always think it's healthy to be fired once in your life. You realize you're not just God's gift to the, to the planet. And uh, got into advertising. And advertising suited me. And I spent 20 years in advertising and became the CEO of a large, uh, at, at that point when I left, the largest advertising agency in the South. Uh, 
with Frito-Lay, PepsiCo, um, um, uh, mini, mini Tabasco, uh, Mrs. Baird's, I mean, just a lot of packaged goods and consumer goods. Uh, left there and uh, I was hired to be the CEO of Pizza Hut, which had recently located from Wichita to Dallas. And uh, uh, how, how a city grows is very important to all of you because it, it creates that. And that created an opportunity for me because I probably wouldn't have moved to Wichita but decided to take on that job. Uh, was, was there for about uh, five years, um, almost uh, into six, and uh, decided to leave and uh, invest my money. And I had made a little money at that time working all that, uh, that in that period and helped uh, start a private equity uh, f uh, firm. Um, a private equity is basically investing capital behind your business that you've started. And it's not, it's not uh, uh, venture capital, it's not startup, it's more your company's doing well, but you need some more money and put into it. You want to take a little money off the table, and I did that. And then uh, I really had a, a, a calling uh, to figure out how I could help, uh, give back. You know, uh, Dallas had been so good to me, and uh, it had been great for my family, but I had never, never served in the military. God, God uh, bless you guys if anybody has in this room. Uh, I didn't get a chance to. And so this was my chance at public service. Uh, became mayor, um, uh, decided to run for the second term, and now I'm, uh, I'll, when I step out, I'll have served eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna skip around a little Please. bit through the time. Okay, what are some, we're gonna talk about the Grow South Initiative, since we're uh, part of the Grow South yeah. Initiative being at Mountain View College. Um, Y'all familiar with the Grow South Initiative? No? Okay. I'll, I'll tell them. Okay, well, let's just talk about the Grow South Initiative, some of the successes, some of the failures, and some of the goals with Room for Progress. Yeah. Let's just talk about that. Yeah. So, when I, uh, I'm a big believer that you, you get into position not to be something, but to do something. A lot of people say, I want to be a college professor, okay? That's the wrong approach. You want to say, I want to help young men and women get their destiny. That's doing something versus being something. I didn't want to be mayor. I wanted to do something. And when I looked at the thing, the, the big issue that needed to be done in Dallas, was to grow Southern Dallas. Now, Southern Dallas is defined by me as anything south of the Trinity on the west of downtown and south of I-30 on the east. It is 55% of our land mass, but only 15% of our tax base. It's a most beautiful part of our city. Uh, by far, we've got the largest urban forest uh, in America, who's been to, to the great Trinity Forest uh, down there and just hiked and seen the beauty that we've got. And here we're just not growing it. Everything was growing north. So I decided to put a stake in the ground and said, we need to grow south. And so using my business acumen and training, I put a business plan together for Southern Dallas. It had five important issues about everything like uh, create a culture of clean, make sure um, our schools are what they need to be, uh, improve our neighborhood associations, things like that. And then five key areas. Um, they range from uh, West Dallas across uh, the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge uh, to Jefferson Boulevard uh, to Lancaster Quarter to the education quarter, I call it, down by UNT Dallas uh, in, 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 in that area. And so we spent a lot of time focused on those areas. And what, what happened, what was good about it, is first of all, we got people, people's attention that they could invest in Southern Dallas. I felt that Southern Dallas was not a charity case, okay? If you, if you approach it like with victim, like, Oh, I, we don't get any attention, please give us some money, okay? No one's gonna do that. I mean, a few nice people are gonna do it, but it's not sustainable. Right. 
If you say, boy, I've got something that you could make a lot of money off of, okay, people come running. And so, to me, Southern Dallas was a great investment opportunity. That's why Walmart came and put uh, their shopping center right in the middle of uh, Oak Cliff. Best uh, sales in, in the region. You know, stuff like that that was happening. And then I focused in these key areas. What was good is these key areas took off. Everything except for Lan Lancaster Keys. That was one of my disappointments. Because we needed more infrastructure, more ba the poverty there was tougher. There was more middle class in other places. Lancaster Keys had a, a high degree of uh, of crime and poverty that uh, we should have taken on head on, I think, early on before we did the economic development stuff. Um, this has been terrifically satisfying to me because the, the value, everything, if, if, if you care about doing something, make sure it's measurable, okay? Don't do something just to make yourself feel good. Make sure it can be measured and then you know you're making progress. And the measurement we used was the value of Southern Dallas, the property value. And in the last six years, that property value has gone up 50%. Now usually things go up by 2% a year, you know, maybe. That's GDP. Um, is uh, in the United States has been about 2%, this year it's 3%. We've gone up by a huge amount and so now people that are investing in Southern Dallas and real estate and other places are getting a great return on their investment. And so that's just one metric that we use. We, we use a lot of metrics in regards to neighborhood associations, in regards to our schools, our public schools have, have never uh, been better in the last uh, 20 years. We have um, uh, improved at a faster rate than any place else in Texas. Um, and our uh, poor performing schools were, I think there was close to 40 poor poor performing schools and we're down to three uh, in, in, in all of Dallas. and, and uh, uh, Southern Dallas had a lot of those issues that we, we dealt with. And it was just every day I was looking at what was happening in different neighborhoods to keep this momentum happening in Southern Dallas. So I'm very happy about that. Um, look, there are some parts of Southern Dallas that didn't grow as fast as I wanted. I talked about Lancaster Keys. We still haven't gotten uh, housing up the way I want it in the education quarter. That's, that's um, kind of a virgin land down there. We've got the blue line running down uh, right next to UNT Dallas. We built some stuff, but we have, it's been forever to get the infrastructure we need and the investment in apartments and single family homes there. Uh, we still have a lot of um, uh, issues in, in, in affordable housing and segregation, and it's one of the things that I'm focused on as well. I wanted to um, just brush up on one thing. Is this since, mine? Yeah, that's yours. Since we're talking and we're on the subject here um, about the Grow South initiative, one of the things that we've discussed is the, um, the prison, the pipeline zone, and also the food desert in which Mountain View resides mm -hmm. at zip code. And we wanted to talk about like um, some of the future plans. So as you leave office, what are some of the things that we can do together, not just you, but together as a group to raise awareness and also contribute to eliminating this problem as we move forward. So the first, let's talk about the food desert first, okay, okay and then we'll talk about criminal justice. Okay. I think that's probably the, the best way to do that. Um, look, the reason that we have a food desert is uh, two issues. Uh, one is the perception that there's not the incomes that can support uh, 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 grocery stores and places that are out there. I'm finding that is not true. The problem is that so many people live in a cash society versus a banking society. And so just know if you don't have a banking relationship you're off the grid, okay? And so when companies uh, start to map their stores and they see 
the low uh, numbers of income in, in a neighborhood, they just assume that's right. But the truth of the matter is, as Southern Dallas has a lot of wealth, but they don't bank, they don't do some of the other stuff that's necessary. So part of it is data that needs to be changed, and I've been working with a lot of uh, uh, stores and a lot of retailers on that. Uh, the second part is, the, is how spread out Southern Dallas is. I talked to you about how big it is, and usually people put stores into dense areas, and we are kind of more spread out. Even over here in the, in the uh, uh, you know, Mountain View area, where the, the houses are separate and they're not the dense neighborhoods. Now, what have we done about it? We've put huge incentives in place for stores to come. We've worked with uh, uh, companies to create initiatives uh, like PepsiCo that are going to be putting stores on, on the wheels, if you will, mobile, uh, making it more mobile. Um, and then we're trying to close down a lot of bad actors so the retail environment can kind of come back in an amazing way. I just looked at Redbird and there is a Planet Fitness that just opened there that is as good as anything else I've ever seen in this country. It's remarkable and the place is packed and it's a perfect place for a grocery store next to it. So that's why momentum is important. Uh, uh, criminal justice, this, this whole issue is um, really that prison pipeline that you spoke about is one of the most disheartening things that for me. And you can predict at times the chance of someone going to prison based on their zip code. And that's not the way it should be. And so we've, we're working uh, with um, our new chief of police. We're working with uh, folks across the aisle in Austin, in the legislature, to make sure the type of, of it, things that we have in criminal justice will help people get back on track as opposed to hurting them. Uh, Judge Crusoe just got elected. I know this is very important for Judge Crusoe. Uh, but the, I'll tell you the biggest thing about this is really education and starting early. You guys are old people, believe it or not. You think you're young. But it's those three and four year olds that really have the best chance. If we can get them in school, as opposed to sitting in a, in a room watching a TV show, if we can get them learning, at, you know, then they're going to be at third grade reading levels that we want them at, and they're going to start to succeed throughout uh, their place. And those folks will not end up in prison. Okay, um, since you brought up Judge Crusoe, who's a friend of mine, yeah. um, let's talk about this past midterm election. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, Mayor Rollins is part of the Democratic Party. I do know that. But in addition to that, we saw um, Mr. R. Red take down Pete Sessions, which I thought was good. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw the new hiring or the new uh, winning of Judge Crusoe. So, what is your He's take? politicking here, I think, a little bit, isn't he? <laughs> So, so what is your take on the progress of the Democratic Party, not just in Dallas, but the state of Texas? I know yeah. everybody knows about Beto, and he brought a lot of awareness. A lot of voters came out to vote, record-breaking numbers. But I want to get your take on what do you see, not just based on that, but the future based on Well, first of all, let me plead uh, uh, my position first, OK? Uh, yes, I'm a Democrat. I've been a Democrat since I was in college. I was brought up in a Republican household. When I was in college, I became a Democrat and kind of stayed with it. I think the Democratic Party has gone a little bit too far left for me, okay? okay. Because I believe in freedoms and, and free enterprise and, and those sort of things. But um, we've been uh, fighting a long time to get relevancy here in Texas, and we're starting to do that. Uh, uh, I'm. Um, so I, plus the mayor's position is not a partisan position. We don't run as Democrat or Republicans, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's like it should be about the person, not the party that you're doing that with. Now, what I think happened in Texas is Texas has historically been a very pragmatic state, 
But the Tea Party, uh, which was an outgrowth of the Republican Party, not all Republicans feel this way, but a lot of folks just went off the grid, okay? Talk about going off the grid. Uh, for, they, you know, when, when you started to deal with a bathroom bill, uh, and, and which I believed was terrifically uh, um, discriminatory for um, a transgender and uh, LGBTQ community. Um, when you start to cut the, 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 the um, uh, investment in public schools that we did, uh, and everybody wanted to kind of pull back. Um, the, the Secretary of Labor, Robert Reich, under um, early under uh, uh, President Obama called it the secession of the successful. It was like, okay, I'm, I'm successful, now I'm going to pull back and I'm not going to engage. And I think that's what happened with the Republican Party. Slowly but surely with good candidates, and I think Colin was a great candidate, we're starting to, um, we have turned uh, the Dallas County, Tarrant County, Harris County, and Houston, and uh, Travis County, and San Antonio, those are all blue. That is 55% uh, I believe of the population of the state of Texas. But we're still a rural state, and uh, I think we still haven't gotten to the place where the Democratic Party for the state of Texas, not for the city of Dallas, for the state of Texas, is not relevant enough. It's not talking the values. And that's why I think going uh, East Coast Democrat is wrong for Texas, I believe. But I see Judge Crusoe as a very pragmatic guy dealing with criminal justice. Colin Allred, very pragmatic guy doing what's right for business and jobs and uh, individuals. They're able to balance those things out. And I think that has got a lot of uh, runway, and it's just a matter of time. If we, stay, uh, if we stay disciplined, if we just go ballistic on President Trump, okay, which is so easy, it's like picking on the, the dumb kid in class. I mean, it's like everybody can do that, okay? It's like the, the key is can you, can you create a vision that the rest of the class is excited about, not just picking on somebody, and that's what we've got to do. Right, okay. Well, I'm going to piggyback on that statement. So as a, as a Hispanic serving institution at Mountain View College, uh, a lot of our student population are Hispanic. majority is Hispanic, but we also have a, um, a great deal of international students. So in addition to the Democratic Party and the majority being a red state and the policies that have always been in Texas, what is your take on the plan to deal with the influx of immigrants moving to Dallas from these poor countries or areas? Well, this is where, as a centrist, I feel um, uh, uh, the clearest about uh, um, what we need to do. Look, this is not, let me just stop, let me kind of copter back. I think that one of the most important decisions that we all have to make is how we deal with the other. Who is the other? The other is the other person, okay? Now the other person can be a professor here at Mountain View, okay? Or it can be somebody that lives in uh, St. Petersburg or somebody that lives in Guatemala. And what do we think about those people? I think competition is good. I don't mind competing against you from time to time. It makes me stronger, but I can't demonize you, right. okay? Um, and I also believe the greatest parable, um, one, of the, one of the greatest parables in the Bible is that of the Good Samaritan, because it calls us into question, are we gonna walk by, or are we going to say, this is my job to help? So suddenly, when there is a caravan of immigrants saying, I want to go to the United States, it's a tough, tough question. Are we going to let them, um, you know, kind of lead them by the side of the road, or are we going to figure out how to integrate them? Um, now, so that's kind of a philosophical view that we've got to ask ourselves. And I can ask an answer for myself. Everybody as a community has got to do it. And not just because I'm rooting for them because I'm in the same ethnic heritage. It's, you got to think about this. From a business standpoint, 
we are not going to get competitive if we don't have the labor market and the influx of, of folks because old white men are not having any kids anymore, okay? Just the way that it, it just works, okay? We've got to build a, a labor force that can compete with China and uh, Germany and other places. And so we need you in school, okay? And we need other folks in school. We've got a lot of people in this country that are dreamers that we've got to kind of take care of. Then we've got to fix the immigration issues. So we are a country of laws. I believe that I believe in laws, okay? But I also believe in vision and how we get from here to there. And so I'm a, a, a believer in, in creating a welcoming city for the city of Dallas. We did that in our office, we, uh, in the city hall. We created an office of welcoming communities and immigration. So people that are displaced and in, 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 a, in a, uh, a, a, you know, a unique place in their life that need help, they can come to the city of Dallas and do that. And I want to make sure that every person that lives in our community feels that there's a pathway and, and they have hope. And what I will not uh, tolerate is what happened with the Muslim ban at DFW Airport uh, a couple of three years ago when we just shut off that and these are mothers coming to see their kids and what happened when we separated families down at the border. That's totally unacceptable because now it be that becomes a moral um, uh, um, mistake versus just a, a public policy and business thing. So we've each got to answer the question. I can't answer it about how we're going to deal with somebody that is not like you. Somebody that might be a Trumpite. How am I going to deal with that? Am I going to hate them or not? And you know, somebody that's from China, and they, they going to be, well, how am I going to work with that person? And then second, we've got to think about this from a business standpoint. I just want to stop. I want to show you something real quick. So if you're not born in the United States, we don't have, you're not going to get detained. Don't worry. Okay? If you're not born in the United States, raise your hand. I want the mayor to see what kind of numbers. Raise them up high. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here in Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. I, this, is, uh, this is what has made our country great for people that, that are not going to sit on their butt and expect things, but come and try to make a better life for themselves and their future. And that's exciting to me. I don't know why we don't get excited about that. Yeah. We'll deal with criminals, right. okay? Well, yeah, and, and by the way, that's why I'm, I'm a big, strong police guy, okay? I have no tolerance for people uh, that are going to steal and, and do bad things for people, but let's take those individuals on a one-off basis and let's make sure we create an environment for you guys to succeed. Okay. Let's talk about education for a minute. Yep. Okay. So the cost of education is a highly debated issue in this country, all over. Okay. So with your contribution as mayor, with the initiative of the Dallas Promise that we also have here uh, at this school, uh, which contributes to free education for high school and community college, um, what are your thoughts about the future of the Dallas Promise and the quality of the education going forward as we see these influx of high school students migrate more to community colleges mm -hmm. and so forth. Well, first of all, I think it's a good thing. I think uh, uh, fundamentally uh, we've got to get people more, uh, more of a chance at higher education. I think that we've got to start customizing it, and that's one of the things I like about the College Promise, uh, Dallas County Promise, working with high schools that focus on different initiatives in those high schools. It's not just the chance to get something paid for, but a pathway um, to approach it. Now, let me just talk <laughs> Turkey. Um, we're not where we need to be. Uh, I, it, it saddens me that only 12% of uh, Dallas County uh, are graduating high school and have a ACT or SAT score 
that says they're college ready. That says that our system is broken, okay? Now, th the rest of the country gets us up to about one in five, 20%, but we're still lagging that. In a lot of places, there's not a debate around the country about spending money, okay? New York State, California, they're spending money on education because they know they need to, and that's why I like the uh, Dallas County Promise. We're doing that. The way this is set up, though, is it's not the mayor's purview, okay? What we spend in, in, in education is done at the state legislature, and that's one of the reasons that I liked some of the folks that got elected because they are going to be pro-education and at the school district level. I don't have, I, I don't believe money solves problems. I think people solve problems. But once you have some solutions, money makes you get there faster, okay? You can have more horsepower in the car and it's, it's a more expensive car. You can still have a well-built car, but, but I like to have it well-built and the horsepower to get us going there. I think DISD is showing some reform uh, things that are very critical. And this is, this is a, I'm gonna give you a little advanced course here in public policy because it's very tricky. Because traditionally, Democrats are for labor and a lot of teachers and labor unions are want kind of everything to be the same. That's a tradition in our country because so much labor was crushed down, okay? And, and so everybody bound together and kind of brought it up. That is, works against you to a certain extent in teaching because the great teachers should be, be made uh, to pay, be paid what lawyers, doctors, and other folks are being paid. And that's happening now at DISD, but that, a lot of people didn't like it because you're keeping some folks down. And that's a tricky thing. That's why we all have to wrestle through these political things and not take the easy, the easy answer. But I do believe that we can see it from here. You understand, basically, the way we're educated today is the same way that kids were educated in Prussia in 1700s, okay? This, this thing about someone standing up here and talking to you guys is pretty much the same, the same uh, model. Meanwhile, we got these things. And they, everybody's learning so much and so fast, and we've got to create customized learning programs, and if we don't do that as public officials, if we just kind of keep it in the, the dark ages, shame on us and you should, uh, you should get us not elected. And so that's where I'm, I'm pushing, and that's why I like the, the Dallas County Promise, because it, it allows, it takes money off the table, it allows you to do that, it allows you to get to, um, uh, our, or do we have any of the folks that are still in high school here? Yeah, a lot of them. Okay, look at that, all right. So you're still doing that. You're able to get this sort of uh, learning faster and earlier, and it's going to make you better and more competitive. And so I'm a big, and we're, we just have to get the word out. You've got to get it out to your friends and um, uh, make sure that everybody knows because we need everybody in this place. And I'm not saying everybody in your class because some people may want to do something else, but there are... There are uh, tens of thousands of jobs going um, uh, unfilled right now, paying $20 an hour because people don't have the skills necessary for them coming out of our, our environment. And it it's really comes back to that prison pipeline and the, the desert, the food desert. We're still caught in like 20 years ago and we gotta get moving. Right. I'm going to um, change the mood a little bit. Okay. Because okay, we've been a little serious. Let's talk about... Um, this this is fun, though. Okay. This is like, okay. this is the future fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. All no, right. go ahead. Okay, so uh, as the mayor, um, just tell us about um, 
Have you copied any ideas or borrowed any ideas from other cities and mayors? Let's talk about any of that. Well, this, I mean, there's no question. Uh, this is, was a vision of mayors in, in Tennessee and Louisville, this uh, Dallas County promise. You, it was really kind of a um, cradle to career sort of approach in filling that. So that, I think, is, is a good example. Um, this, many mayors had, had um, um, uh, dashboards. Does anybody know what a dashboard is? It is you're driving along in the car and you see a dashboard and you know how fast you're going, how much gas you got. And it's pretty simple, okay? And I think I learned that how to get more dashboardy as, as mayor, as I kind of looked at, uh, at other cities. Um, I think that um, uh, public transportation is a big, um, uh, mobility and transportation, not just public transportation, there's best practices in different places um, that I'm seeing. Uh, we we got to move faster in that area because right now, I mean, look, we're, we're here, and I'm sure a few of you take uh, DART uh, from a bus standpoint and it takes you 45 minutes to get home. And meanwhile, there's, there's a lot faster ways of doing that and you're starting to see that pop up in other places. Uh, those are sort of uh, the things that I kind of look from in other cities. Okay. Would, you, uh, would you have any problems Taking a few no, I'd love to. That's what I, I was uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, I was in, um, in Buenos Aires. We had uh, uh, the, does anybody know what the, G2, the G20 is? The G20 is the, the top countries in the nation get together every year, um, excuse me, every couple of years. And no, I think it's every year and they talk about worldwide issues. For the first time, they had U20, Urban 20, where they had the top country, uh, cities in place, and we had a conference to prepare for Argentina hosting the G20. And uh, one of the uh, opportunities that I got was to sit down with uh, uh, the same amount of kids uh, in uh, uh, young men and women um, in Buenos Aires, and they asked me a lot of tough questions. It was uh, it was fascinating. But she she raised her hand right back here. So. Okay. So first of all, I gotta tell you, thank you, South Dallas. Oh my God, wait, wait, wait. Yep, South Dallas. It is amazing. Me and my dad we knew from day one. Like where I remember passing by there, it was back in the ghetto days. Uh -huh. I mean, it's still kind of ghetto, but it's okay. And I was like, we need to invest there. Well, actually, my dad said it. Waited too long and he beat us to it. But that was amazing. My niece plays soccer at Mercy Street Sports. You should go. I'm telling you. you Mercy Street's it. great. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. I'm telling you, thank you. Thank you. The other one that I want to talk about is Amazon. How do you feel that we lost the headquarters here? Are you sad? Because I read about you this morning. Yeah. I was in the news and you were on there. And I was like, wow, I'm going to meet you today. <laughs> so I have to leave at 9, uh, 1030 because I have a press conference here at 11 uh, to, to answer that very question. So you get to be my warm up, okay? Um, I'm, um, I'm disappointed. I, I am uh, because we lost. Um, uh, we put on a great show. A lot of people worked very hard, um, but uh, we did not come in first. Um, I believe that it tells us a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, we came very, very close, and the reason we did, I, I, I just talked to the folks from Amazon, and they said, what you've done there culturally, what you're doing uh, from an education standpoint, what you're doing from a land use standpoint is really remarkable, okay? but there was a bias to go east. And it is something that we've got to deal with that we're gonna to have to overcome not being on, uh, on a coast. And I, you know, they were in Seattle, they decided to go all the way across uh, and be on the east coast uh, to do that. I can't, look, 
the customer is always right. That's one thing you learn in business, okay? The customer is always right. You go, well, no, they're not. They were idiots, okay? <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. I got it. The customers can be idiots and right at the same time because if they, they don't feel that they're being uh, treated like they're right, they're going to leave you and you won't have a customer anymore. I mean, so you define that, all right? And so they're the customer. Mm -hmm. That was right for them and I have it. Uh, what it does, it, it makes me double down on the, some of the issues we just talked about, about making sure we have the talent, the high-tech folks, the STEM programs that we're doing, make sure that we're on the cutting edge. There's no reason that this room cannot compete with the same room and the same age of kids in uh, Queens or um, in, in Virginia. And uh, I believe that but we've got to work harder and it's dependent on you for where we're going to be going. Okay. We're going to do one more question. Um, and then we have to go to the Kahoot game with the mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, what are your plans for the uh, Clear Park South Dallas area? Uh, personally, we have a, a, a property in the Dallas area near the Fair Park mm -hmm. and like Martin, Martin Luther King. And I've heard that everything is going to get demolished and there's going to be apartments and new houses and stuff like that. Is that just speculations? Yes, that's speculation. I don't think everything's going to be demolished. I mean, uh, one thing I've learned about life is whatever you hear, kind of cut it by about a half. And if your kid tells you they had one beer, they had three beers, okay? So just know that 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 people people uh, under play stuff and they overplay stuff okay but, but south dallas uh, south dallas proper south dallas fair park however you want to call it is um, a really important part of our community and i think it's going to see a lot of transformation it already has on park on park uh, Ave. If you've seen that, those old those old houses, and those old houses have gone to being worth fifty thousand dollars to being worth four hundred thousand dollars right off of Martin Luther King Boulevard. We have been spending a lot of money on Martin Luther King Boulevard to to clean it up, to light it up, and it looks a lot better. But right off, we still have issues. One of the things that's going to help us is making Fair Park itself a seven day a week venue. It, 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 it's hopping during the state fair, but in November it's not happening. So we've got to make that happen. We just uh, hired a, um, uh, uh, an operator to go in there and make that better. We're also spending a lot of money in infrastructure and right now it's kind of beat up because we're digging up roads and laying new pipes and stuff. Once that gets laid up, we're going to, uh, uh, I think, be a lot better. Um, once again, to me, it's about the schools. We've got to make uh, Madison and Lincoln high-performing schools. And I think when we do, we're going to see more people in flux there. Whenever we talk about this sort of thing, the word gentrification comes up. And some people don't like the word gentrification because that means that somehow people are de being displaced. The liberal Brookings Institute has, has kind of proven that gentrification done right is the answer for things. You need to have people come in. You just can't have people displaced. And so we've, got, we've created housing policies now to help those individuals, but we want people to invest, to move into that area, especially young adults that are right near downtown. Look, it's, the Cedars has gone through a transformation like there's no tomorrow in the last eight years. Uh, did you say you live in the Cedars? I live in Southside. Okay, you live in Southside, okay. So, and how long you been there? Five years. Okay, I mean, literally, there was no chance he was gonna live in Southside 10 years ago. And, and what has happened is just remarkable. That's spilling over, I think, into South Dallas Fair Park as well. Toughest area, no question. Highest poverty from a zip code standpoint, uh, but I think it's uh, uh, got a chance now uh, that we we're gonna we've got F Fair Park being worked on. We're gonna create a um, uh, we're gonna green that up. We got too many parking lots. We got to green that area up, and it's gonna spill over to those other areas. I'll take one more. I got. One. Okay. 
But I want to. I want to make. Oh, sure you got to do your know. thing. Okay, well, let's I'll do it. Uh, our thing. Yeah. Our thing. Yeah. Okay. Our thing. So, um, everybody, take out your cell phones, and I'm gonna let the mayor before he leaves make a last closing remark. But everybody, take out your cell phones. We're gonna play the Kahoot game in honor of Mayor Rock. That's funny. Yeah, that's great. Filed for the trademark about two months ago. You did? Oh, yeah. That's so good. When I heard you. Put one on Beto. When you, when you said that, I thought that was great. Yeah. But at the end, uh, I want to take a picture with you with the hat. That's yours, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sit over here. All right. Sit over here. said MIT. Thank you. <laughs> we talked about Boston College during the beginning of the introduction. Okay. Josh Wayne is still in the lead, followed by Ness and Austin. And he's going to dethrone Josh Wayne. It's Josh Wayne. Josh Wayne. Okay. So which, demo, which party? Which party? Party. How do you know? How did you get that wrong? Okay. Joe Sway. Joe Sway. Okay. Joe Sway still in the lead. Okay. Next question. All right. We got. 
two more questions, okay? Let's be serious. This is for money, okay? I want to get some cash prize, okay? The mayor's giving y'all two thousand dollars cash prize. I was playing. <laughs> okay. Mayor Allen served the CEO of what franchise? They brought it to Red. Obviously. <laughs> All right. Last question. This is the last question. What is the initiative that we talked about at the beginning of the class to grow the southern portion of Dallas? Last question. Oh my goodness. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank for you. Us. Thank you.